everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Sasha Lauder, and it's very great to see all of you in this very exciting moment. I hope everyone is staying safe out there, and please do stick to following your government's guidance in containing the COVID-19 pandemic. Today is very exciting as we will be hearing presentations, keynotes, and later on a panel discussion with the experts I'm sure you're excited to see. Don't forget to activate the translation feature to Bahasa Indonesia while joining this webinar. This public lecture is brought to you by the Legatum Center for Development and Entrepreneurship at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in collaboration with Grab Indonesia. And today's theme is about business agility. Nowadays, where the market is constantly changing, business agility becomes a more and more critical element in business resiliency. When COVID-19 first hit in Indonesia, Grab, a leading super app platform in Southeast Asia providing everyday on-demand services, launched Grab Protect, a suit of safety and hygiene measures to minimize the risk of the spread of COVID-19. We'll see how Grab builds a culture of agility and how it adapts to the current disruption. We will put Grab Protect as the center of this discussion, and we will elaborate on the collaboration between private companies and the public sector that successfully minimizes risk and impact of COVID-19. Your questions are also very important to us. We will have a Q&A session later on after the panel, so please do put your questions in the Q&A box at your Zoom application. Our first session is the case study presentation that will be delivered by Professor Scott Stern from MIT. Quick facts about him. He is David Sonner, Professor of Management at the MIT Sloan School of Management. He holds a BA in Economics from New York University and a PhD in Economics from Stanford University. Professor Stern started his career at MIT from 1995 to 2001. Before returning to MIT in 2009, he held positions as a professor at the Kelk School of Management at Northwestern University. So without further ado, please welcome Professor Scott Stern. Hello and welcome. Um, the, uh, well, hello and welcome, and thank you so much for including me in what I'm sure is going to be an exciting 90 minutes as we investigate the impact of Grab Indonesia on uh, on uh, Grab Indonesia as they confronted and overcame some of the key challenges during the COVID-19. Uh, pandemic. And in particular, I'm just delighted to be introducing um, this case. I was delighted uh, to look at it. And before we even get started, I just wanted to thank my colleagues at the Legatum uh, Center for Development and Entrepreneurship at MIT, um, our colleagues at Grab, who were generous with their time and their uh, uh, generous with their time and their insights about how they approach Grab. And I wanted to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules as we've sort of kind of delved into how businesses, particularly startup and entrepreneurial scaling businesses, confronting are confronting the challenges um, facing us uh, in this new era. Um, so um, if you could get started, um, if you could move to the next slide just so we can get started with the case, that'd be great. So I was given the task, and I, first I wanted to uh, thank everyone involved, but I was given the task of just sort of setting the stage for what I'm sure is gonna be a rich discussion of both the role of Grab, the role of government, and the role of entrepreneurship and innovation and business agility during the COVID-19 crisis. Next slide, please. So the um, so let us start with the context. And as you all know, as of March 2020, the world started to lock down in the face 
of the COVID-19 pandemic. Interestingly, Southeast Asia was perhaps a little bit later to lock down um, completely, but by April 10th of 2020, there were more than 3,000 cases in Indonesia and the implementation of large scale social restriction measures, um, including most notably restrictions on transportation. This obviously, when you think about the um, business of Grab in particular, its focus on ride sharing and ride, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, a mobile uh, uh, taxi services and mo mobile bike services. This was going to be the largest crisis in the company's history. And so the question became, was this just going to be something where they sat back, let a bunch of drivers lay them off, maybe just idle the, the um, internal workforce and then hope the pandemic goes away? And so next slide, please. And so what did Grab do? So I'm going to be, uh, 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 what was so interesting is, of course, Grab, as all of you know, is a company that is across many different geographies at this point. But here we're going to be focusing in particular on, in some sense, the testbed area for Grab, Grab Indonesia, and in particular, the work that Ritsky and his team undertook in the immediate aftermath of the COVID crisis. Specifically, what I was, uh, our co my colleagues at MIT were put together a case study that really goes through the systematic testing, experimentation, and validation process that ultimately led to a suite of new initiatives by Grab and, and its Grab and the full team. And in particular, I want to highlight just a few pieces of that. I'm sure that's going to be coming up in the context of the discussion. But one thing was that immediately Grab introduced and they sort of had a hypothesis that they needed to undertake significant measures to make both their drivers as well as the passengers safe during this critical time. The question is, how do you do that? Grab Protect, Grab Car Protect. And in particular, the introduction of various shields and other measures that allowed drivers to feel safe, that allowed passengers to feel safe and to actually be safe and to limit the transmission of COVID. Interestingly, one of the distinctive parts of Grab is the large bike business. In early user testing, Grab found that both passengers and drivers were much less comfortable about sort of sharing the bike because of the closer proximity. And in Grab Bike Protect, you can even see it here in the photo, they were able to introduce these kind of wings and they undertook various designs that allowed them to adapt a solution nimble for their purpose. Next slide, please. The question is, what enabled Grab to respond so quickly? And then how did they scale that and succeed in terms of really being able to bring the business back and then use Grab Protect as a driver for overcoming COVID in the context of Indonesia. I would highlight two key parts that I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more about during our discussion. The first is a culture of agility. Grab's agility is built on, right from its foundation, mission-driven. A constant process of experimentation, user feedback, testing, validation. One of the quotes that I love from the case was the idea that the assumption is that 80% of what we do isn't working, but it's our job to make it work. And so it's okay to have more failures than successes in terms of improvement, as long as the failures are fast and the successes 
are implemented and scale. Then came the moment where all of a sudden government, and we're gonna be hearing from the minister in just a moment, that the government said, oh my goodness, we're gonna need a partner in really bringing Indonesia back in terms of accessing our healthcare facilities, in terms of bringing people back to the office, in terms of meeting our most critical needs. Interestingly, government had initially been skeptical of Grab and its founding because it was disrupting the traditional, the traditional transportation business. But five years of credible work by Grab had allowed it to become a trusted partner, to allow it to improve the lives of people in Indonesia and lay a groundwork of trust where each part can take a piece of the innovative risk to solve the novel problems. Okay, I know that that was real quick, but what I wanted to do was just sort of set the broad scene here for thinking about the challenge that Grab faced, the fact, the challenge that Grab Indonesia faced, its immediate experimental response, its ability to scale that response, and then its successful collaboration with government and partnership with government in allowing that to address the most pressing challenges facing Indonesia during this crisis. Thank you so much. And now back, as I believe, we're gonna hear from the Minister of Transportation. Thank you very much, Professor Stone, for sharing with us today. As we've heard the presentation, very interesting, two facts that we can point on is how Grab could successfully ride this pandemic by being able to adjust really well to the situation. Of course, by listening to the customer's feedback and do not forget also to collaborate with the government to making sure that the mission is actually to making the lives of people in Indonesia better. So our next session today is a keynote that will be presented by the Minister of Transportation of the Republic of Indonesia, Bapak Budi Karya Sumadi. Bapak Budi studied architecture in Gajah Mada University and made his way into top positions for several old state-owned companies. And of course, he became the CEO of PT Pembangunan Jaya Ancol, Jakarta Propertindo, and Angkasa Pura II before being sworn as the Minister of Transportation in 2016. So everyone, please welcome Bapak Budi Karya Zumadi. The Honorable Executive Director, the Legatum Center of Magisusit and the Suit of Technology, Dina Ha Sherry, President of Grab Indonesia, Pak Rizky Kramadi Brata, David Sanov, Professor of Management Technology, MIT Sloan School of Business, Professor Scott Stern, Rector. University of Indonesia, Professor Ari Kuncoro, SAMA PSD, Rektor Institut Teknologi Bandung, Professor Reni Wirahadi Kusuma, PSD, Director Bank Raya Indonesia, Mr. Sunarso, Tidungi Gas, Patribisan, Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's great pleasure for me to deliver on behalf of the government of Indonesia. A keynote speech in this respect, academic form. I would like to first unloading the Majestic Institute of Technology, MIT, particularly the Legitim 
Center for Development and Entrepreneurship at MIT, who has given a special interest in understanding how business agility could be leveraged in public-private partnership in Indonesia and how technology play a crucial role in solving developed changes in society, especially during the time of pandemic. I would like also like to congratulate to Grab Indonesia for its Grab Protect Innovation that has been recognized as a case study of business agility by world-class institutions like MIT. I truly hope that learning from Indonesia serve as an inspiration from the academic community and also transpired beyond classroom. On this occasion, I am also grateful to learn that leaders from Indonesia, high rank university and financial institutions are also present to enrich the mass needed discussion about managing innovation and synergy of talking covenant impact from their expertise. Ladies and gentlemen, more than one year has passed since Indonesia's first case of COVID-19 was announced. The government will continue with the necessary action to overcome the global pandemic and certainly need public support to achieve success. In the responding to the pandemic, the government prioritized is clear. Public safety and health are our top concern, as well as ensuring our national economic cover. Therefore, we continue to conduct treaty, testing, tracing, and treatment, while the public must either to health protocol. Wearing the mask, washing hands, and maintaining safe listen, these measures are basic principles that need to be implemented in adapting to the new normal, including in the transportation sector. Since the outbreak, the world has changed beyond recognition at the unpredicted speed and it has dramatically shifted the global business landscape. The prom launch of the Grab Protect in Indonesia signifies Grab ability to quick align its resources and stakeholder relationship to ensure that its platform is inclusive and essential for Indonesia in the fast changing environment grab agility. Provide proper listen for the business community about the advantage of business agility. This is a symbol of the care and support for the government regarding the improvement of application based transportation safety in midst of this pandemic outbreak to the community. Ladies and gentlemen, as regulator in transportation sector, we have issued countermeasure to prevent the spread of COVID-19 by implementing health protocol in all model of travel 
air, water, rail, land for intercity movement. We have stipulated for the travels to fulfill certain health precondition criteria, including mandatory COVID-19 negative result and entry exit permit letter as term and the condition to travel. We also request transportation profile to reduce load factor of their vehicle to allow adequate physical detention implementation. On top of this effort, the government is also pushing for vaccination to reach herd immunity among Indonesian people. The vaccination process is being delivered in the pace by protesting individuals who are the most vulnerable. Therefore, the first is people to be vaccinated were a nurse and doctor. Then, the elderly and public service officer, the public sector worker, including those who working in the transportation sector, such as air crew, huntsmen, trains, and bus driver, as an online transportation driver, such as Grab. I also like to thank Grab for their initiative in the uplane of excellent to drive Grab vaccine center. In several cities, their continuous support to the government vaccination program throughout the country. Our effort in curbing impact of the COVID-19, she has a quite promising result. Micro scale public activity restricting name PPKM in area with the high density meant to slow down the spread of the virus, indicated by declining trend of the weekly active case compared to early this year. We are also optimistic that the ongoing national recovery is now on the track, indicated by positive outlook of economic growth and manageable inflation. However, we should never be complacent with the figure as there are some cluster of spreading during the celebration of 8th of Fitri last month. Even though we have a immunity to refuse prevent holiday exodus or mudik. We have to continue synergizing in planting in the core by always abiding a health protocol as well as promoting 3T. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude my remark by inviting other industry players to follow Grab Indonesia. Example, in collaborating with government in fighting the COVID-19 with strong collaboration from all elements. I'm confident we can grow stronger and nation and put other mid days behind US in the near future. Thank you very much for your kind attention and I hope the Academy lecture will can be a great success. Have a good day. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Pabudi, for sharing with us today. As we heard that for more than a year, yes, we've been living through dramatic changes that has forced people to change the way they live, for businesses on how they could stay and survive. But as we heard also that we are very happy that Grab ensures that its mission stays in line with the governments to keep the health and of, of course, the hygiene of all of its public safe. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we will further discuss on how Grab builds its culture of agility by hearing from Grab and expert panelists, including Professor Stern. So please hold your questions until the Q&A session that will be announced later. Everyone, let me introduce you to our panelists. The first panelist is Professor Scott Stern. As I mentioned earlier, Professor Stern is David Sarna Professor of Management at the MIT Sloan School of Management. He explores how innovation and entrepreneurship differ from more traditional economic activities and the consequences of these differences for strategy and policy. The next panelist is Bapa Ritsky Kramadibrata. Baba Rizki is currently serving as president of Grab Indonesia, in which he leads and oversees business operations, expansion, strategic partnership, and brand development. He graduated from Pajajaran University, Indonesia, University of California, Berkeley, and the State University of New York. The next panelist is Ahmad Gamal. Baba Gamal is the Director of Innovation and Science in Technopark, University of Indonesia. He is also an advisor to the Smart City, a collaborative research center led by the University of Indonesia. He received his Master in Urban Planning and PhD in Regional Planning both from the University of Illinois, United States. The fourth panelist is Dr. Sigit Puji Santosa. Baba Sigit is currently the chairman of Institute for Innovation and Entrepreneurship Developments at the Bandung Institute of Technology, Indonesia. He's known as an influential figure in the world of transportation and was involved in developing vehicle products under major American companies. Baba Sigit graduated from Bandung Institute of Technology and then completed his PhD at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The last panelist is Indra Utoyo. Bapa Indra is the Managing Director for Digital and Information Technology at Bank BRI. He obtained his Bachelor Degree in Electrical Engineering and Telecommunications from Bandung Institute of Technology, Master's Degree in Communication and Signal Processing from Imperial College UK, and PhD in Strategic Management Studies, University of Indonesia. And to lead the panel as the moderator, we have Ms. Dina Shirv. Dina is currently serving as the Executive Director of the Legatum Center at MIT and a Senior Lecturer in Sloan School of Management. She holds a Master's of Public Administration and Management from the Harvard Kennedy School, an MA in Economic Development Studies from the American University in Cairo, and a BA in Political Science and International Relations from the American University in Cairo. These are our panelists and moderator for our discussion today. Hi everyone, hello, wow, very great seeing everyone here today. I hope everybody is doing well because I'm sure all of our invitees here are very excited to this session. So before our discussion begins, let's commemorate this special moment in a photo session. So with that, we'd like to re-invite Bapak Budi Karya Sumadi to join us for a photo. So everyone, I would count down from three to one and then let's pose to the camera and give our best smile, right? So let's get ready, everyone. Three, two, one, smile. 
Thank you very much everyone and also thank you very much Bapa Budi for joining us today. So, is everybody excited? Of course, it's going to be a very fruitful discussion. So, without further ado, now I'll be handing over to our moderator to lead the panel. So, everyone, please welcome Dina Sharif, Executive Director of the Legatum Center at MIT. Please, Dina. Thank you so much. Fantastic. All right, there we go. Thank you so much. Um, well, before I start, I just wanted to take a minute to thank uh, Julia Turnbull and Reggie Mauricio from the Legatum Center and the entire grad team for all of their efforts in drafting this amazing case study. A lot of effort went into putting this together. I know that my team stayed up very late at night and uh, the grad team would get up very early in the morning. And I think what we have as a result is an amazing product. Um, and one of the first first uh, case studies that we've done at, uh, at the Legatum Center, specifically on ride sharing apps. So we're very excited. I'm very excited to welcome all the panelists and all the participants with us uh, today. And I'd love to get started immediately with Ritsky. Um, Ritsky, just to start with you, can you share with the audience what were some of the first thoughts that you were that were going through your mind as the pandemic began when you were thinking about Grab and what Grab was going to do? Uh, hi, Dina, and hi, everyone. Um, the first thought that came to my mind was probably like everybody else's. It's like, wow. But more seriously, when the pandemic hit globally and in Indonesia, um, we all thinking that there must be a change. Actually, there must be changes. And priority must have changed as well in the customer's minds. Um, so the top priority now will become the uh, safety and health protocol. And there must be some changes also in the terms of how people mobility will be affected as well, um, definitely. So um, of course, in, in, in the midst of the pandemic, there must be changes that we should introduce. Number one, we need to ensure that our drivers and passengers' um, safety and health is at the um, um, highest concerns for us. Uh, that's why we introduced also what we call um, our, our service that was um, presented by Professor Scott Stern earlier, um, uh, Grab Protect. We um, introduced it in the, in the forms of uh, Grab Car Fleets it's our four wheel surfaces. We introduce uh, partitions to limit exposures between drivers and passengers. Also for our two wheels uh, mobility surfaces, we, um, we introduce it for our grab bike um, motor partners. Also a shield that could be strapped on the, on, on the back like a backpack to re restrict airflow from drivers to passengers. Also there must be changes as well as um, uh, there must be um, um, a change in terms of how uh, passengers transports. So we must think of how we should change our service quickly. So we need to pivot it quite quickly and we're introducing um, and we're focusing more into um, delivery services like our uh, Grab Mart and Grab Food services. And then by focusing on that, um, we could make some strong diversifications of our businesses. But most importantly is that that would be a, a great pivot also for our driver partners in which they could more than survive um, um, going through this pandemic um, and then they could get more orders and then they could also enjoy the growth of demand in delivery services as well. Um, and just a follow-up question, uh, how important, what, you know, the case is really about the agility of Grab. Um, how important was that agility to your to in order to enable you to respond so quickly um, during the pandemic? And also, how did you integrate such a culture of agility into Grab? I think agility is key, and I'm very grateful grateful that our agility as Grabbers that's how we call our employees Grabbers that um, through our agility we have managed to weather the storm and adapt with strong business diversi diversifications, definitely. We quickly move to support our drivers, help small businesses uh, to get online, 
and focus on growing our grab food and grab mart deliveries to serve our customers growing demand we also quickly um, uh, adapt our how we uh, serve our passengers in transport and mobility by introducing grab protect it's it sounds simple but it it actually came with a lot of preparations coordinations with the governments and we're thankful to the ministry of transportation that have helped us to um, introduce this grab protect services it went through some um, certifications as well and some uh, quality check with them as well um, we did also a lot of, of changes in how we serve our passengers as well um, and of course the key besides agility is also a collaboration and we thankful our call uh, 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 the the panelists here which um, are our colleagues in in collaborations uh, bri for example uh, we we together served during this pandemic how we built stronger digital ecosystem in the country and of course like professor stern mentions earlier that the human behind the technology is actually one of the main enablers and many of our drivers and leaders coming from leading universities uh, such as university of indonesia and bandung institute of technology of course and um, for us definitely um, at grab the mission driven and like professor stern mentions as well the free to fail cultures that have fooled us and together these values allow grabbers to have the spirit and audacity to tackle novel problems with innovative solutions even in this very challenging situation dina and quickly and Which very quickly as too. well yeah absolutely Definitely. wonderful thank you so much Ritsky. well i'd like to move on to uh, scott uh, since you did mention him um, scott you've been working on issues related to entrepreneurship and innovation for a very long time now we don't need to mention how long, but what conditions do you think existed in Indonesia that allowed Grab to thrive the way it has, and specifically during a, a pandemic? Yeah, and and first, thank you so much, uh, Dina and Ritsky, um, and the minister uh, for just a really interesting uh, discussion uh, so far, and to your entire team at Logatum, Dina, as well. I, I know the case writing is challenging, and this was a really nice. It one. sure is, to, to, to but Grab at. was a pleasure. Exactly. Really great collaboration. Um, so let me just sort of highlight two things. I've been a big fan of Grab uh, since I think close to its uh, founding. I've been watching it for a while. And in some sense, I think that one of the things that you saw was after Uber started to grow, you saw many, many imitators to Uber, but very few companies that were able to adapt the general concept, the idea of mobile ride hailing, ride sharing to the local environment. And as best as I can tell, first in Malaysia, then in the Philippines, but then perhaps most notably in Indonesia, Grab was really able to transform ride hailing, particularly with that focus on bikes and you know motorcycle, you know, motorbike, also with Call, you know, transport, but with maybe a different culture than would exist in the US or in Europe around that, as well as in a number of other operational and logistical details. So first, I just think that Ridsky and his team set themselves up for their ability to be resilient during this crisis because of the experimentation and their ability to provide unique value to the Indonesian market. In fact, one thing I'm always impressed by is that, in fact, Uber did make a big play into Indonesia and ultimately withdrew, right, being acquired by Grab in that market because of Grab's real ability, I think, to serve and focus on the customer, focus on the relationship to the driver. Second, I think Ritsky already brought it up, this freedom to fail, I think is really important. I just love that part of the case. It's something I'll bring with me to other discussions as what it means for a scale up such as Grab to really focus on constant improvement, even when times are good. And I think that really gave them the foundation for rapid response in the context of COVID. One last part that I would make is that around the world, the relationship between startups, particularly ride hailing startups and government 
has not always been an easy ride. It's right. Sometimes that's been antagonistic. Sometimes there are challenges with disrupting traditional models. And sometimes the ride sharing companies have been uh, disrespectful of the needs and priorities of government. And one of the things I was really delighted to see in the case was how Ritsky and his team had built up that reputation with government over a long period of time. And then ultimately we were able to focus on those effective public-private partnerships in the pandemic and prioritizing activities that were specific to the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Most recently vaccination, getting people to hospitals, sharing food to, you know, food delivery to indeed uh, communities in need. I think all of those different elements went along with the Grant Protect as a operation, as a kind of innovation that then enabled all that value to be created in this most challenging time. So I'm happy to talk more, but I know we have some great panels. I want to hear from them all. Just a quick follow-up question though, Scott. I I think it's really interesting the way Grab partnered with the government during COVID and uh, and honestly, the way the government collaborated with Grab. And at MIT, and when we think about innovation ecosystems, we always think about the significant role of the government in supporting innovation and innovation-led enterprises um, to thrive. Do you think that this particular collaboration will have uh, an impact on other sectors in Indonesia and the ability of other companies in Indonesia to collaborate with uh, with the government in a similar fashion, using this as an example. Yeah, I mean, I think that in some sense, when we often talk about public-private partnerships, everyone talks about them because they work in theory. The challenge is they often don't work in practice. And at MIT, we like things that work in theory great, but we like things that work in practice even better. And so one of the things that I think will, that will come out of this is the ability to use the specific insights. And in the minister's remarks, I, I you know, centered on how he really talked about how Grab was able to bring operational excellence to address those government priorities. That was a real recognition of understanding the role that a private sector scale up organization such as Grab or even right in other contexts, a startup might be able to bring to the, to, to, to the activity. Interestingly, that in some sense, that kind of really identifying areas of comparative advantage and identifying areas of shared mutual interest is a way of really building an innovation-driven entrepreneurial ecosystem. And too many regions around the world, very often startup world and government are antagonistic towards each other, each not taking mm -hmm. advantage of what can other, what each can contribute to that ecosystem. So. Thank you, Scott. Um, Sigit, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about uh, the role of universities. Um, throughout the pandemic, uh, what we've seen is the need for an accelerated transition to digitization of business, education, healthcare, and varying other sectors. Um, what role should universities be playing uh, in the in in the support of this digitization process and also in the documentation of it in terms of research. Hello, Dina. I see. Yeah. Go uh, ahead. Thank yeah, thanks, Dina. Sorry, the, um, the the connection might not be perfect, but uh, let me try to address um, um, your um, uh, questions. Uh, this is part of a great discussion. I think this is a good discussion between the governments, uh, industry, and also academia. Um, the, the key question here is actually research innovations. Uh, I believe, and um, all of my colleagues in ITV uh, uh, believe that the um, the role of university has to be part of the puzzle piece of the ecosystems of innovations. So that's that's the, the, the key factors here. So um, as an ecosystems, university will be able to provide an, a great innovators, a great uh, innovations of products, and also um, uh, networks uh, of collaborators such as the investors, uh, industries, and governments, uh, policymakers. So, um, 
the the problems in Indonesia is actually uh, uh, quite, mass, uh, quite massive because uh, the collaboration such as uh, the ITB and University of Indonesia with Grab is actually one of the few. Uh, why? Because um, the um, uh, the the R and D part of the industry is not uh, widespread yet. There's only a few um, innovative uh, future you know technology industry that is part of it. So um, we are glad to to mention here also that the um, ITB has several activities uh, R and D collaboration with the Grab. Um, the the challenges uh, there are there are several challenges that we can discuss further uh, part of the discussions. But the key factors of the four challenges as an ecosystem. So um, we need to ha uh, have a very good established uh, ecosystems to make sure that we will be able to address any uh, sudden change um, in the um, you know the business uh, process of the industries due to this pandemic. So, and, and we're also glad we work uh, again together with the uh, uh, four other university with the Ministry of Transport and how to. Uh, 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 basically address um, and assess uh, the pandemic impact into the transport sectors. And I can tell you that the 80% uh, industries actually is in the brinks of uh, uh, financial difficulties uh, more uh, more into the collapse. But I think uh, the closing of these uh, first sections of uh, the discussion is that um, the uh, the university has a very important role to provide innovators and also product innovations as part of the ecosystems that uh, really, really need it in, in Indonesia. Thanks. Thank you, Sigit, which is a perfect segue to the question I have for Gamal. Um, Gamal, uh, considering all that has happened during the pandemic, the need for innovation could not be greater. Um, how can universities, entrepreneurs, big corporates, the government and investors all work together to create a more enabling environment for inclusive innovation specifically in Indonesia? Uh, thank you for the question, Dina. Um, first of all, uh, on top of the pandemic, I think uh, universities uh, are more and more uh, in the game of becoming excellent because we're facing global competition, right? Uh, metaphorically and literally. Um, we are in a global competition to attract the most generous donors, most prestigious grants, uh, the best professors and the smartest students. And now it's becoming even more literal because uh, the World Trade Organization has classified higher education as a service commodity, which means that, you know, we're now competing with um, international uh, universities that could, you know, basically uh, open their operation here in Indonesia. Uh, so we as higher education institutions are required to be adaptive and agile to respond to new urban and global challenges. Um, but Sigit has mentioned about an ecosystem. I have known him uh, for quite a long time, and uh, I would uh, basically agree to that idea. And uh, to, to basically be uh, more supportive and be more contributive to that ecosystem, uh, it's very important for us in the university to increase our relevance, right? Uh, and it has been uh, UE's uh, policy to basically um, push uh, not just professors, students, but also research management uh, to be more engaged to the industry, uh, to increase our relevance. For example, uh, our management is now required, uh, not just encouraged, to basically assume additional positions uh, in professional associations, commissary positions, uh, in corporations, uh, you know, in audit committee, supervisory committee, and so on and so forth. Uh, professors are required uh, and not merely encouraged to uh, collaborate globally, uh, to be encouraged to uh, have sabbatical leaves, uh, to work in the industry for a certain time, uh, and uh, to be hosted by a global university for a certain time. Uh, and UE also requires its professors uh, to specifically uh, do research uh, that uh, would address uh, national and global issues, uh, specifically issues like you know, global industrialization and urbanization, uh, especially in developing countries, uh, the aging of global population, uh, and some disruptive new technology. So uh, we would be very interested to uh, work together with GRAB, for example, uh, which is already uh, within the main policy of the university. Uh, and UE also support and encourage student engagement in relevant industries, and uh, they uh, are acknowledged uh, in terms of um, university credits. Uh, so internship, for example, is uh, one of the main uh, channel for uh, students to be uh, more engaged to the industry. 
Um, it has been uh, the policy uh, at UE here, uh, and it's way ahead of the National Campus Merdeka program. Uh, I think that will open uh, lots of other discussions with uh, Pa Rizky or Pa Sigit uh, and people at Grab and other industries, Dina. So I guess I have a follow-up question for both you and Sigit, which is, to what extent are universities in Indonesia really reaching out to varying stakeholders in the ecosystem and providing a space for these stakeholders to come together um, in a way that would allow for more amazing companies like Grab to come out into the market? That, that's a very good question. Uh, so um, I can talk on behalf of UI and on behalf of uh, my office as well, right? Uh, I direct the Office of Innovation and Science Techno Park, which is very similar to the institution that uh, Pa Sigit heads. Um, we basically curate patents and property rights uh, uh, to offer to mature industries, but also we play a role uh, at creating ideation sessions uh, with mature industries. Uh, and in this case, uh, although Grab is uh, a startup, now it's a, a very big company. Uh, so we listen to their needs and market demands before we actually assign specific teams to uh, conduct applied research uh, to address the issues, right? So we make sure that we can facilitate a streamlined process from ideation, validation, prototype development, and, um, you know, uh, property rights registration. And then we license those ideas and technologies to industries. But also we have uh, facilitated a, a streamlined process from uh, ideation, validation, uh, prototype development and incorporations for university-based startups. So uh, we work with mature industries, we work with startups, we work with uh, uh, property rights uh, uh, producers and prototype uh, makers, uh, and we make sure that we listen to uh, what the industry and what the market has uh, to say about uh, these research and applied research. Fantastic. I don't know if Sigit has anything yes. to add to that. Yeah, let me let me add. Yeah, I really agree with uh, what Gamal is saying that um, uh, the the university roles and how to reach out to the industries has to um, has to be strengthened. Um, this is the roles that I've been um, with uh, all of my colleagues within the ITBs. Um, how to establish this innovative research uh, becoming implemented in the industry. So the key here is really uh, how to strengthen the innovation ecosystems. Um, we are, are working within the framework uh, within the IDB that um, we have to put a priority cluster. So in IDB, we put uh, uh, four uh, major priority clusters. And uh, in fact, what we discussed today is actually two out of four actually included in the discussion. The first one is the energy and transportations. The second one is the, um, um, the infrastructures and um, uh, disaster mitigations. The third one is the uh, ICT, uh, uh, big data and cybersecurity technologies. And the fourth one is the, the most important during this pandemic is actually the cluster of innovation priorities on the health and food uh, technology. So by having this uh, very focused, um, you know, research innovation within the university, we were able to uh, reach out to so many um, uh, industries, whether it's a national or global industries, uh, we have uh, more than 400 uh, corporate collaborations at any given years. And, and the uh, um, during even during the pandemic last year, our um, grant from the industry is actually only about five percent decrease uh, from what the year before. It means that um, with a strong uh, partnerships uh, as part of the ecosystems, uh, collaborations with the industries, actually, um, the, the activities working um, actually along very well. So that's, that's the, the key here is how we can uh, put the higher education institution like the, uh, you know, um, ITB or University of Indonesia, we can, we can put together a very close relations. Secondly, um, how we put the trust, uh, because the problem is sometimes, a uh, university might not be going that far into the um, uh, product developments and innovations. Maybe it's a halfway through, um, uh, but um, when we put the trust, actually people are coming up. Um, uh, we're glad to mention that uh, many uh, global manufacturers, uh, global industry from Japan, from Korea, from the US, and also from, from Europe, actually uh, coming to our office um, as part of the uh, innovation ecosystem in, in ITB so that um, um, we, we are able to uh, proceed with the 
uh, product innovations, especially during the pandemics. Uh, actually, we moved into the, the two clusters of the uh, transports and energy, and then uh, ICT and uh, uh, digital technology, as well as the uh, the health technology. So I think this this is a good opportunities for us. Uh, and thanks, uh, um, you know, what uh, Professor Stir was saying that the, the the strong ecosystem as part of the innovation driven enterprise that has to be part of the university uh, objective in developing uh, great innovation uh, and entrepreneurships. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sigit. Um, Indra, so the question I have for you is, uh, since it was established, Grab has really been dedicated to this idea of inclusive job creation. And throughout the pandemic, I would say that Grab focused really hard on finding ways not only to maintain, ma maintain jobs, but also to create jobs, not just within Grab, but within other sectors. So to what extent should investors be thinking about a company's ability to contribute to inclusive job creation? Okay, uh, thank you, Dina, and also good morning. Um, yeah, I, I think um, inclusivity should be the key consideration, yeah? and especially in Indonesia with multiple cultures, ethnicity, also diverse social, uh, social demographic uh, background. But I would like, I want to share that the, 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 this, the business and social mission, is, there's no gap, it should be get along as what uh, uh, Grab has been uh, doing. It's, it's becoming more essential uh, to pursue what's so-called as sustainability. And uh, I think the implementation of sustainability like what so-called as ESG, environmental, social, and governance, is now becoming a new norm yeah, for, for, for uh, every, uh, I think for any in, in initiative in business. Uh, and uh, what is the, the direction is, I think we, we can also see uh, during this pandemic that the sustainability is the next digital, yeah? Uh, balancing uh, between uh, people, also uh, planet and also profit uh, uh, in, a, in a quite a balanced manner. Um, uh, so the, the that this time is not only for uh, technological trend, uh, but also environmental and uh, also social trend uh, play the role. So uh, to the question, uh, to your question, I think this, the investor, the stakeholder is, will give a value more to the sustainability, uh, to the in in inclusivity, the part of the sustainability, higher uh, than just profitability. Yeah? That's also, uh, we feel that in, as we are of course a public company, as uh, during the pandemic, even our pro profit uh, are, are quite uh, decreased, uh, quite substantial, almost 45%. But uh, as investors are, uh, are appreciate what we do for uh, pursuing the sustainability as can be uh, reflected in the share price. That even our share price is higher than the profit. That's also uh, indicating that investor is really uh, appreciate yeah, uh, that, that we do uh, the, the business in their business uh, initiative. Thank you so much, Indra. Let me let me loop Ritsky again one more time just into that topic. Um, Ritsky, do you do you feel that uh, I think what Indra was saying is that investors will become much more focused on issues related to inclusivity, sustainability. Um, ESG, if you will, uh, have you felt from Grab's experience that the investors that you've been working with and also more broadly other investors in Indonesia and those who are interested not just in Indonesia but in Asia more broadly have taken to focus specifically on mission-driven companies or companies that really follow particular values like inclusivity and inclusive job creation, which has been a core part of the grab mission yeah um, and I, it's okay to say no and if no what what would you recommend to investors no uh, it's actually it's a yes and uh pa indra himself i know he is an avid investor and um, um uh, a particular analyst also to the digital ecosystems as well he has um, released published some of books in 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 relations to this as well 
Um, and yes, I, I felt like um, this pandemic has changed uh, how people think. It's also to the business and also to the investors. It's becoming the, there's more, there's no more, that there's no better times than this time to actually, to pay attention more into sustainability issues, for examples, and diversities. And we have definitely addressed that and captured that. Uh, we see that this will be some kind of a reset to how, how people think. We've put a lot of attention to, for example, um, um, renewable energy as well. We've, we've become one of the, in the forefront of electric vehicles. It was quite unlikely before this pandemic that people will pay attention to you know, electric vehicles. But um, how we adopt it, because now um, deliveries, logistics have become uh, quite substantial in everyday life. We have inserted in how electric vehicles could play an important part of people's daily lives. And then without sacrificing also about the environment. Uh, by the way, now Grab is actually the leading operator of electric vehicles in Indonesia. We have operated um, more than 7,000 uh, electric vehicles in Indonesia uh, to, to deliver foods, deliver goods and, and things. Um, and um, we've seen that the investors' attention to this also at the highest level, and then we're so glad that we're not alone in this. Um, um, our, our attention to ESG definitely um, is the most um, during, you know, you know, during se in several years. And then we've just released also our, our report in, in ESGs as well. And then we're glad we're, we're, be, we're being the... Um, uh, active part of contributions to that. So I'm aligned with Pindra. I think uh, this will be the, the, the best of the times to, to introduce it. Fantastic. So impressive what you're doing at Grab. I need to talk to Tirza about putting a word in for me. Maybe I should come work for Grab. Um, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to, one, uh, one final question to all the panelists really. Um, I'm, we have a pretty wide audience, and I'm sure many of them are, are entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs. Uh, I just want to pose the question to each of you. Um, what words of advice would you have to give to an aspiring entrepreneur or uh, an entrepreneur just starting out uh, in Indonesia today? And I'll start with Gamen, just because you're first on my screen. Um, thank you, Dina. Um... So, because we also incubate businesses uh, here at uh, uh, Director of Innovation in Science Techno Park, uh, we also learn one thing or two about um, developing new businesses. Uh, and uh, from my short experience, I think um, I can uh, confidently say that successful startups learn from, uh, I don't want to say mistakes, but, uh, but limitations of mature industries, right? Uh, and because they learn from uh, what mature industries can or cannot do, uh, usually, uh, successful startups actually provide scalable solution, uh, which is supported by a technology-based innovation. Um, technology is uh, a key uh, important factor here, uh, and it's an important factor because when you have IPR, when you have uh, property rights that is properly registered and patented, uh, you can basically scale up uh, your business uh, into unprecedented levels. Uh, I think uh, Grab is one of the uh, most important case studies for that uh, and uh, because you need to constantly produce innovation uh, successful startups usually put research and validation before execution um, so uh, you do research uh, you think about what the market actually needs uh, and you do research to validate what you think the market actually needs and then uh, you validate uh, whatever you have produced as a prototype to answer the uh, needs uh, that uh, uh, your your market research has validated. So uh, three things basically: now learn from the limitations of mature industries, uh, provide scalable solutions, uh, preferably uh, technology based, uh, and uh, put research and validation before execution. Wonderful advice. Thank you so much, Gamal. Uh, Sigit, what what words of advice would you have? I, I think for all the entrepreneurs and also innovators, um, what we need to do is actually perseverance. Perseverance and also look forward in the future technologies, uh, innovation, because um, without innovations, I think the business is actually, it will be 
very easily um, being acquired or being uh, diminished uh, because of the, uh, the the transformations of the needs of the market. So I think perseverance and then look into the innovation content will be part of the the key process uh, to develop uh, successful entrepreneurships uh, within the higher education. Because as, as uh, mentioned by uh, uh, Gamal, in ITB at any given year, we have probably about 100, 125 uh, applicants uh, for uh, startups uh, to be incubated in our incubator accelerators. But we only uh, give uh, the chance for probably about 20 to 25. Um, we uh, look into the team strength the product innovations and also the, the prospects of the market with the market validation. So um, we look into <laughs> several potentials, uh, but um, yeah, we know we have um, seen that with the very tight um, uh, screening. So we were able to have a very sustained uh, startups uh, rather than come and go. Um, uh, but also um, we, we tested them as part of this uh, perseverance that they have to be very patient. Um, uh, maybe the, the first failure is not the end of it. Maybe two, the, the second chance, the third chance um, will be part of uh, the growing up process. I think that's um, the, the two things that I, I would like to uh, say to our uh, colleagues in the um, um, audience today. Uh, thanks, Dina. Fantastic, thank you, Sikit. Uh, Indra, I wanna switch to you, but before doing so, I just wanted to remind everyone in the audience that I will uh, transition to Q&A from the audience very shortly. So please write your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, Indra, please please share with us your words of advice. Uh, yeah, uh, I think um, yeah, this pandemic is really struck everyone and uh, challenge everyone. We need to reinvent uh, ourselves, reinvent ourselves, not only the, the company, also big company like us, yeah? So uh, it's really uh, I think it's a demand that we really have here. I think agree with Sigrid is perseverance, but also adaptability. Yeah, how we can adapt with this change, uh, and uh, I think there is no longer a standard exact. So we, we have to shift into from standard exact culture because the real problem is no longer exact. We have to be more experimentation. We are adopting uh, uh, file. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, faith and then uh, fast learn and then uh, validate, validate, validate. That's also, I think, the, the adaptability that we need to have yeah, for everyone and how we can uh, then uh, creating more uh, every individual to be more entrepreneurial, yeah? to, to, be, uh, uh, to be able to create value yeah? uh, wherever. Uh, so, um, so we really, uh, I think this become a challenge for how we can build this ecosystem to nurture innovation and entrepreneurship. I think there's a collaboration with the uh, business like us, uh, university, uh, and also government, yeah? uh, and also uh, communities, yeah? and, and to make this kind of collaborative, open collaborative innovation that can uh, support everyone to create value. To uh, I think that's Fantastic. Thank you, Indra. Uh, Scott, I'm sure you have yeah, the, tons of advice. Well, uh, the, uh, thank you so thank you so much. Um, and really great uh, in, insight there from, from everybody. Let me just sort of say, you know, to me, for those entrepreneurs starting out, for those seeking to grow their business, there are kind of three things you got to get right, right at the beginning. And if you get these right, then there's lots of things you can do. And the first is really recognizing that fundamentally being an entrepreneur is testing a hypothesis. But it's not a scientific hypothesis. It's a hypothesis about how you can create value, how you can create value for other people. Those people are called customers. And so ultimately, how can you test whether or not there's a way you can create value for other people through your idea? The second part is why you? What is the advantage, the unfair advantage that you bring to the venture? And finally, why should you do this? What passion do you bring to that venture? 
And then I think once you have those three elements in place, you can then start to think about how, to, and I think um, uh, both Gamal and Sagi uh, talked about this, how you can test, iterate, experiment, and then ultimately make choices to choose a particular customer technology business model that allows you to create and ultimately capture value that allows you to scale and ultimately impact the world in an important way. Lots more to say, but I know we have lots of questions and only a limited amount of time. Thank you so much, Scott. Ritzke, I'm gonna end with you and then switch to the audience. Sure, um, my, my advice has, has been always you as entrepreneurs, we have to give real solutions to problems. And then I think there's no better times than this time to really giving solutions because people are, you know, in, in many ways, having so many problems or maybe unanswered um, questions at this point of time. But in a nutshell, I believe there's three things uh, that not only have helped us grab um, to, to, to be what we are right now, but also I think this advice will be the same uh, for even the new entrepreneurs. Number one is of course, investing in the people or the right talent. And I'm so glad to hear uh, from Pak Gamal and Pak Sigit as well how universities have now um, basically um, uh, uh, adapted um, on how to um, making the students to be um, not only more agile, but also um, uh, more familiar with the um, industry um, uh, dynamics and challenges. And number two, investing in technology, definitely. I think that has been also our, our principles. And I believe technologies will become more and more important in the future to, to solving issues and problems. And also the ability to scale the business while of course balancing between supply and demand. And a, a little bit of uh, perspectives as well. Um, while many people seeing that new normal more as a burden uh, this time, but I think we should see also this new normal as a better normal. And as entrepreneurs, you need to redefine how to redefine that, that I think we're all now in a better normal and capture that as opportunities to, again, giving solutions to problems. Amazing, thank you so much, Ritsky. Um, and while I have you, one question from the audience specifically to you is what keeps grabbers emotionally engaged in the remote work environment? Number one, we're no strangers to remote working. <laughs> Even before the pandemic, we're an avid users of um, um, online platforms uh, because that what keeps us um, very productive. Even though we're we're on the move, um, definitely it's something that uh, we're already adapted to. Though not at the level that we are currently um, um, uh, um, having, but definitely um, uh, the pandemic have have changed and then in the world of social distancing, um, definitely leadership would look different as well. And then we as leaders definitely must pivot uh, from our traditional management styles. So um, rather than working from a place of productivity or efficiencies, leaders must demonstrate, of course, in compassion in order to be effective as uh, strong leadership requires, that requires empathy. So leadership is very, very important. And I think uh, 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 a very clear and strong visions, missions, and goals are very needed, especially in this uh, mostly remote working environment, because that will guide that what will guide uh, grabbers or employees, you know, to stay not only intact but focus on what um, the results that that should be achieving. Thank you so much, Ritsky. Another question is what lessons and in innovation can the rest of the world learn from Grab about scaling sustainable transportation solutions? This is not directed at anybody, so I'll throw it out at anybody who would like to answer. Maybe Sigit or Gemel or Scott. So, so I, I, I can get started at least. Um, you know, one thing I, I think that you can really um, look to for grab. I think there are really kind of two big lessons. Um, the first, I think, is that grab is a real example of Southeast Asia kind of stepping onto really building a global 
brand and company, right? So it's something where you're really seeing that transformation of not just a sort of me too product, but really an expanded kind of uh, scope, uh, product scope and uh, focus. And so I think really seeing kind of within Southeast Asia, that kind of scaling up is, is just incredibly uh, uh, um, I'm impressive. The second is I'm gonna go back to this notion of just really continuous improvement and experimentation in the scale up. So I think within the United States and in Europe, you'll have a real, right? The traditional model is lots of experimentation up front. Then you sort of set the business model. And then we have lots of evidence that firms sort of lose their ability to adapt pretty quickly. Um, we love all, you know, we love our scale ups, but once they sort of kind of got to a certain point, they start to kind of calcify. And here, what I think you see in Grab is that even during this rapid period of growth, it's been able to maintain a real humility and a real respect for the ability to improve. And then that got really applied during this pandemic. I love that 80% of what we're doing is broken, but let's go fix it, fast failures and scale the successes. That's sort of like a mantra for growth. Love it, Scott. I hope you do use the case in class or in REAP or uh, somewhere, somewhere in the many places that you teach. Um, another question to grab, I guess, to Ritsky is how long did it take for grab uh, to, to go to market from idea to going to market? Um, yeah, of course it varies. Um, definitely. Um, I like, like what, uh, Scott has mentioned it requires a lot of preparations and um, our fellow universities uh, speakers panelists here also mentions how research will will play important part in that. Um, so definitely it varies uh, in, in the case of grab protect that actually um, um, it requires a very quick uh, development definitely to cope with the change in the people patterns and priorities as well. And uh, I mean, like we had also to use some of the previous experimental uh, studies as well that we had uh, that was originally um, uh, directed towards safety because our, our, our priority to safety has always been the highest, but then changed a little bit and pivoted a little bit and adjusted a little bit here and there to adjust to what people actually um, are looking at uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the terms of the uh, pandemic situations in which more to the health protocol. So um, in grab protects, we quickly uh, develop uh, what we um, had on the partition protections and then um, shield, uh, portable shields there. Um, but beyond that, we actually, we actually also developed. So that was the first that quick to launch maybe in, uh, in a month, um, if I'm not mistaken. But we understand that it wouldn't stop there. So there's actually follow-up innovations that coming to follow grab protects uh, not only in the term of physical uh, factors, but also in terms of technology. That took, you know, a few months to roll out because it, it, it requires some technological developments, but then some other technologies follows. For example, the uh, face mask um, 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 recognitions where we um, 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 scan drivers, whether they, they wear masks or not. And then also the GPS uh, geofencing to locate whether there's um, too much uh, congregations of drivers in certain spots and we give warnings and then the latest will be um, the um, the vaccinations the vaccinated drivers we've we've um, we've located the vaccinated drivers and by the way we've we've um, also assisted government in 53 cities in Indonesia in vaccinations and hundreds of thousands of drivers have been vaccinated right now so now um, we have adopted a technology where whenever people order our service it shows whether our drivers have been vaccinated or not so um, so it's of course it depends um, some of course based on urgency we have to um, adjust some of the existing technology that we have but also um, there should be sometimes also to prepare for follow-up technologies that may require a few months to adopt. Thank you so much, Ritsky. Um, and this is again, a question to the panelists. How can companies like Grab broadly benefit local company or local economies? Um, and I would say maybe uh, Gemel or uh, uh, Sigit, if you wanna jump in on those, on that question or even Indra. 
Um, so I think it's interesting because uh, if we look at, uh, you know, bigger companies like Grab, uh, Grab is in a very uh, privileged position because, you know, it has uh, a huge capital to basically delve into uh, different ventures, right? Uh, and because it is capable of uh, diverging its business operations into so many other ventures, uh, it, it is capable of looking at um, micro opportunities that might be too small for uh, other corporations to delve into. Uh, and they uh, are capable of using technology to basically um, uh, increase the scale uh, of, of, of that micro opportunities, right? So. Um, we uh, we are looking uh, at, for example, Grab Food, which you know five years, six years ago, uh, might be something uh, that would be seen as uh, uh, a particularly um, you know not profitable uh, venture uh, on top of you know the transportation business that it uh, itself uh, held, uh, and then you know it, it could basically get into um, other opportunities as well. Uh, what I would like to say is uh, that um, in many of these ventures, uh, it is often uh, that we uh, have to work with uh, the micro players, right? So uh, the people who uh, are on a day-to-day -day basis and um, are working at a very small operations and um, hopefully, you know, with the involvement of a technology platform like Grab, uh, we can basically um, get them more involved uh, in the larger um, uh, economic development. Just want to make sure that anybody else doesn't want to jump in. Me? Go ahead, Indra. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I think a um, company like Grab, yeah, it's, it's really inspiring the, all, all of us, yeah, because um, I think what uh, Grab has been uh, Achieving so far, I think we can see. Uh, even though there is no, I don't know, maybe there's a research yeah, on, on that. What is the impact of Grab uh, economic ecosystem? But what we can see that Grab is really creating uh, uh, maybe million jobs, yeah, for for uh, for driver for uh, uh, I mean for food uh, uh, maybe business, yeah. I think uh, this is kind of also building. What's so called now is a gig economy that people uh, in the individual, the freelance that already get used with technology, then then they uh, 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 they create their their own uh, job, yeah, and uh, 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 joining the ecosystem of of uh, Grab. I think that's the the impact for local economies that we can see, and uh, uh, I think that's also impacting company like us, a uh, uh, bank that can also support uh, their business, yeah, to to grow. I didn't. That's what I comment. Thank you so much, Indra. I think one final question from the audience was around innovation, how, the creation of an innovation culture and sustain a culture of, let's say, innovation and sustainability. How do you create a culture of innovation and sustainability that lasts in the long term, um, as Grab has been doing? Who would like to take that one? Uh, let, let me start first. Um, I think Go it ahead. has to be in the visions um, because visions is very important to set not only um, what you're doing right now, but also for the futures. In Grab, we have a mission with, we call Grab for Good, meaning that we develop technology in Grab for good causes. Uh, that has been the reasons we do our services, um, how we um, provide platforms that actually um, a meeting platforms between our partners and consumers, uh, whether it's what uh, Agamal says, uh, food deliveries or marts or even mobility services. Um, I mean, like creating these visions has um, creating also motivations for all of us to keep on innovating. This is actually what wakes me up every morning, you know, not only learning, but also realizing how so many people really depending on our services and technology um, to earn incomes and to fulfill their needs every day. Um, I think that has been embedded in Grabber's DNAs and um, they also wake up the same with, with the same motivations to create innovations every day 
to make sure that we deliver uh, for the good causes for the people. Thank you so much, Ritsky. I do believe that we need to wrap up. Um, so my final question to everybody, and I wanna thank the, the participants, the audience for, for attending and for your amazing questions. But the final question I have for everyone, I love to end my pan panels on uh, a very high note of positivity and hope. So the question I have for all of you, very, very quickly and very briefly in one sentence, coming out of the pandemic, and I know many countries, including Indonesia, are still really in the peak of the pandemic, but what are you most hopeful about moving forward as we eventually all go past this pandemic when it comes to innovation? Um, and Gemel, I'll start with you this time. Or I started with you last time, might as well start with you this time. <laughs> Uh, so I, I think it's important for us to increase our relevance uh, to answer real world problems. Uh, and all of us need to work together to be able to do that. Great. Indra, what are you most hopeful about? Uh, as for one word, I will uh, mention hyper collaboration, I think. Um, so because we need to move quick and um, this is about how we can uh, collaborate more. Yeah? This is the collaborative economy. Then hopefully by having this uh, better uh, collaboration, not only yeah, with, with, with the player like uh, Grab, with the university and also the government, and we hopefully can create a bigger impact. Thank you, Indra. Sigit, what are you most hopeful about? Um, I think the technology adoption is actually very hopeful for the future post pandemic. I think um, people are now realizing you know, how fast the digital transformations for the transportation like Grab uh, has been accelerated a lot. Uh, without it, probably we are probably in the uh, second, third um, stage, but now we are in the fourth stage where we have the widespread of technology adoptions for the futures of uh, innovations. I think that's uh, very hopeful. Ritsky, tell us what you're most hopeful about uh, when it comes to innovation moving forward. Um, like I said before, let's aim for a better normal. Um, let's not be too somber on what's happening right now and work collaboratively. And then each one of us um, um, giving our best of what we can do. I mean, like in the case of Grab, of course, our technology universities is developing um, human capitals. Um, a bank like BRI is investing, but let's aim for a better normal and be positive because everything is reset somewhat right now. And it's an opportunity for a leap for everybody. Amazing. Scott, take us home. What are you most hopeful about? Very, very good. Well, my sense is that the pandemic puts into sharp relief that innovation is a tool for addressing our most pressing human, social, and economic challenges. And whether or not it's the, um, the technology we're using here, Zoom, whether or not it's the incredible work of Grab and other local uh, cloud-enabled digital companies keeping our main streets afloat, or whether or not it's the magic of vaccines that depended on 40 years of investment, what we're seeing is the ability of innovation to solve real problems and go from idea to impact. Thank you, Dina. I not agree more. Now, I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time to be with us today. Thank the participants. And again, I wanted to thank my team at MIT and the entire team at Grab, um, especially Tirza and Shelly for all of the efforts they put into this case study. Um, and, you know, Ritsky, I, I can't thank you enough for your leadership and what you've done with Grab and the example that you've put forth for others to follow. I really do appreciate what you do every day. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand this back over to the MC. Dina, thank you so much. That was very impressive, very interesting to follow around. And thank you to all of our panelists today and to everyone who submitted their questions. Although we're very sorry that we couldn't answer all of our questions because of the time constraint. 
So the idea of Grab Protect was driven by Grab's agile culture as agility has become the core to Grab's business model. Serving many market is not an easy task and Grab was able to build a culture of agility and respond to its ever-changing environment even in the unforeseen circumstances of the global pandemic. I hope you get incredible insights from our discussion today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, please keep on wearing your mask if you have to go out and please follow your local government guidance in containing the COVID-19 pandemic. That ends our event today. And on behalf of MIT and Graf Indonesia, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Sasha Lutter. See you in the next event. Bye. Thank you.